Kia ora, I'm Cherie Kinnear and this is the COVID-19 news update for Tuesday. There were 21,616 new COVID-19 community cases reported today. There are 960 people in hospitals around the country, including 22 in intensive care or high dependency units. And two people have died from the virus, a man and woman both aged over 70. While giving the latest numbers at the Ministry of Health, Director General of Health Dr Ashley Bloomfield addressed the hospital numbers before speaking more broadly on the country's Omicron outbreak. Uh, a little more detail of the hospitalisations in the northern region where we have very good automated data. There are 559 people and of those 40%, which is 233, are aged 70 or older, over and the average age is 58. So we have seen a shift towards older people being in hospital. The reason that someone is in hospital is not actually finalised until they are discharged through a very careful and internationally consistent coding process. However, we do know there will be three groups of people in hospital with COVID. First, those who are there uh, primarily because of COVID-related symptoms. The second group are people who have pre-existing conditions like diabetes or heart disease who get COVID and that may be exacerbating their underlying condition. And third, there is a group of people who are admitted for other reasons, unrelated. For example, they've had an injury or they require maternity care. They also happen to have COVID. We have a slide that shows for the northern regions for DHB, so that does include Northland. Uh, the number of cases, which is the blue line, compared with three transmission scenarios that were modelled by Tipu Naha Matatini before the outbreak. Uh, you will see here that the, the high scenario that was modelled peaks at around 11,000 cases in the northern region uh, during the second week of March. Incidentally, that's about 50 times the peak we saw during the Delta outbreak last year. There are a couple of reasons why that may be. One is that we introduced rapid antigen tests and we've had actually remarkable levels of reporting by people of their rapid antigen test results, both positive and negative. The other is, and I will come to this, it may well be a reflection of the fact that we've got quite a high proportion of our cases that are the BA2 subvariant of Omicron. I will come back to that. But what you can see is after that peak, quite clearly in Auckland, the number of cases is now on the way down. Meanwhile, Dr Ian Town has provided details around long COVID. He says some of the main symptoms were low energy, fatigue, difficulty concentrating, low mood, chest pains and difficulty sleeping. He added the ministry is funding a study that aims to understand the experience of those who have had COVID, looking at both the long and short impacts of the virus. This study aims to understand the experiences in Aotearoa New Zealand who have, those who have had COVID-19 looking both at the short and the long-term impacts of contracting this illness on health, well-being uh, and other factors. We'll be looking at the experience both within families, whānau and Pacific families, as well as people with disabilities, to give us some broad information about people's experience over time. And we're certain that this research, when it's received by the expert advisory group, will be able to help us plan better for future management of those with this condition. And that's the latest COVID-19 news. For more and to stay up to date, head to nzherald.co.nz. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. To stay up to date with all the latest news from the New Zealand Herald, click the subscribe button below or check out one of the videos here. And head over to nzherald.co.nz for more details on these stories and more.